Hello, I'm Linda Ader, a longtime member of Blackfish Gallery, and this is my current show. It's entitled Vary and Repeat, which refers to the variation and repetition of pattern. Um, I'm both a, an artist and a scientist by education and sensibility, and my art entails biological forms, abstracted biological forms, with the dynamics of uh, the interaction of color. At my day job, I used a microscope to um, examine cell samples from patients for signs of cancer. I found these uh, shapes and forms just fantastically interesting. Um, they had shapes and forms that were both subtle and extreme, but, but just absolutely wonderful, in spite of the fact that they uh, were causing um, dread and possibly death uh, in the patient. So I decided that I was going to take these uh, forms out of the lab and present them anew, give them a new life and paint on canvas. Uh, I thought that I could make them more playful and intriguing and that they would not then suggest death or sickness. This work is entitled Lapis Embedded. Lapis refers to lapis lazuli, which was one of the um, very um, expensive earth colors that was uh, mined in Afghanistan, uh, and um, uh, painters used that for years to achieve this beautiful blue. But now it's a synthetic blue uh, it, uh, called ultramarine blue, and that's what you'll see in the middle of this painting. Um, this whole work was inspired by a, um, a book that my daughter sent me about color, a journalist who really loved color, took a sabbatical from her work to go and explore the world and find all the different earth colors that she was familiar with. Um, so you'll notice that in the upper right-hand corner and the lower left-hand corner, those are, are, uh, are burnt umbers and red oxides, and the two sort of yellowish-looking ones on either side of the lapis lazuli are um, uh, ochres, then there's burnt umber and um, uh, burnt sienna. So she found those colors in Zealand and England and uh, everywhere else. But the most interesting was, was the uh, lapis lazuli. She hired a, um, she went to Kabul uh, in Afghanistan. She hired a man to take her all the way up on a, uh, on a mule they both rode mules up to one of the mines where lapis lazuli was being mined. Um, and so that was a, just a, a fascinating thing that she did. So then she returned and wrote this great book. So this work is inspired by that. This work of small pieces is entitled Conversation. Um, I've uh, used these similar images in all of my other works in the show. And they're, um, they're on top of these little squares. And the squares are all different colors. And in a group, to me, they look like they were talking to each other. So I entitled it Conversation. The pieces are the dark, shapes are raised up from the, uh, the wood panel. And I did that by collaging a, uh, some pieces of BFK paper and then painted over them. This piece ent is entitled Flight. The abstracted biological image appeared to be, to me, flying across the top of the uh, canvas. Uh, the composition is derived from uh, an African-American uh, quilt maker um, who lives in G's Bend, Alabama. This is a group of G's Bend um, quilters who for years, decades, have been making these quilts. And recently, within the last decade, maybe a little more, uh, they've been discovered and their work has been published in different uh, books and, and magazines. Um, and I have their book, and I, I like using the uh, uh, compositions in some way, tweaking them as well. 
uh, for uh, my own compositions. This piece is entitled Chevrons Divided. Um, you'll see that the, um, uh, the work on the uh, left and right, or the pieces on the left and right of the center, um, or vertical, are chevrons. So um, this was also a uh, composition that I borrowed from the G's Band quilt book. Um, different colors, different, you know, variations, but... Um, so in this case, I used three colors to create all of these different co colors, three basic colors to create all these different colors by adding a little bit of white to certain things. Uh, the darks are uh, a Payne's gray instead of black, and this particular color is a mixture of ultramarine blue and uh, carbon black. And uh, if you tint it up with some white, it'll be a, um, a bluer, it looks more blue, so the other blues that you see in the chevron uh, pieces are uh, the same Payne's gray uh, with added white. The greens are a gold green, and when it's tinted with white, it becomes the more chartreuse looking green. Then I've used red oxide for the reds, and when it's tinted, you get pinks, and uh, darker pinks than medium pinks. This piece is entitled Suspension One. Um, to me, it's almost obvious that you've got a really dark background and these shapes are just kind of floating or suspended in this dark, um, uh, viscous matter. The uh, uh, dark is a Payne's gray again, and you'll see that you, some of the blue, the blue is also a Payne's gray tinted, uh, tinted with white. And then there's the gold green and the chartreuse and the um, red oxide with the pink. This is a pair of uh, paintings, actually. They're on wood panels that have been um, glued together. Um, I call these stitchery. Uh, the, the one on the left is entitled Stitch, Stitchery Cerulean, uh, Cerulean Blue, and the one on the right is entitled uh, Saffron Yellow, uh, or Stitchery Saffron Yellow. So those refer to the two center colors. The, um, uh, these reminded me uh, of uh, sort of embroidery and the other kinds of uh, so-called women's crafts that I'm so uh, admiring. Um, the colors surrounding the uh, central intense color are mixtures of those two intense colors. So you'll see in the upper right-hand side of the saffron yellow, uh, that yellow or that ochre color that's up in the top, upper right is a mixture of the yellow and just a teeny bit of the blue. Um, the one right above that yellow is a mixture of more blue and just a little bit of yellow. And the one that's to the left of the yellow, and to the right of the yellow, is a greenish color and it's sort of a, a mixture of the equal amounts of those two together. Thank you for viewing this virtual tour. The show is up until October 30th, and hope you can come in to view it in person.